Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Zvach Emayin Gimel. We begin two lines uh, off the top of the Amid Desanya. So we're in the middle of a question, a question on our Mishnah, where we learned that even one problematic, uh, faulty animal, they got mixed into a whole group of fine uh, animals, karbanis, which are suitable for hakrova, that single problematic animal will invalidate everybody. Okay, so let's say that uh, was a chatas hamesa, a chatas which was uh, faulty, slated for misa, gets mixed into the other valid karbanis, they're all slated for death. You can't, you can't do anything, you can't be makrov. And the question was, the obvious question was, what happened to Bittel Baraif? One in, uh, say, 10,000? Null and void. Bottle and mavutl. Right? Why do we have to reckon with that single problematic animal? So the answer was, well, an animal is uh, something which is counted individually. Right? At times. Not always, but at times. When, you know, the, uh, the, the fellow sells animals, he will count them one by one. That gives each animal individuality, uniqueness, which won't allow it to become meshed into the, you know, into the, into the, into the equation, into, into, the, uh, into the group, and become bottle. It stays unique, it stays independent, doesn't lose its identity. You have to reckon with it. That explains our mission. And the, the point was that although animals very often are sold by bunch, by the herd, by the group, without counting them individually. Nevertheless, the, the Tana, the opinion reflected in our Mishnah, is of the opinion that Kol Dovar Shiesh by Minyan. Right? So let's see. Uh, just go back to the top of the Ahmed. Kol Dovar Shiesh by Minyan. I feel a Midrabana and light bottle of a Kolsh can be the rice. Any, any item which has an element of count to it, sometimes it's sold by count, by number, will not be bottled into the larger group, even if the issue is a a rabbinic iser, certainly in our case, where the iser is dairais, where do we find such a such an opinion? The sanya we find it in the following brisa. So the fellow took a litra, a certain measurement, a certain weight of ktsiyas, of dried figs, which they would then press into a container, into a barrel or whatever. Shadarsa he pressed, he squashed this uh, pound of figs which happened to be truma, only suitable for a kayin, okay, and he mistakenly mixed it up with regular mundane figs. Shadras al pi eagle. He pushed it into the, the top, the mouth, the opening of a container called the eagle, in which there were many other figs, which were okay, but this one is truma sitting on top. Now he doesn't know which, he has a hundred, he doesn't know which container it was in. Veni yadeh ve'eza eagle darsa. He's not sure into which container he pushed in these figs. Now, you know, certainly it's lying on top. Whichever barrel it was, whichever eagle it was, it's still on the top of that eagle. The top layer is true, but the rest is not. Okay, but he doesn't know which, uh, which container. Or I'll be chavis into a barrel. Not sure which barrel. I'll be chavis into this um, honeycomb-shaped... Uh, a container, a different type of a container. Okay, just another variation of the same. Mix up. So not sure into which one he pushed it in. What do we do? There is a layer of truma sitting amongst all these containers, not sure where. So we have Ramirez take and Rabbi Yehuda's take and Rabbi, Shur's, uh, and Rabbi Yehuda's take. Meaning there was Machlekes <coughs> between Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Shua. Rabbi had one, one version of the Machlekes. Rabbi Yehuda had a different version. Here comes Rameya's version. Rameya Imer, he says as follows. Rabbi Lezer Shita is, Rabbi Lezer Imer, Roin Esel Yainis. He takes a very lenient approach to this whole thing. He says, you know, Truma needs a hundred, right? If it's one part Truma into a hundred of non-Truma, the Truma becomes null and void, becomes bottom. The question is, can we combine the material on the bottoms of these containers. When you know with certainty that the truma is only sitting on top, can you sort of add all the material together and say, okay, it's 100 
against one and its bottle. Or are we only going to focus on the top layers? You need a hundred okay layers versus this one problematic one. Which way do we go? Roglazo Eimer, he takes a lenient approach, Taisa says, because it's only a pay raise. Uh, the halach is that truma of fruit is only mid only by dogon tiroish v'yitzar, grain and olives and, uh, and grapes, is it the raisa, but otherwise it's the rabbonon. So they will make all the uh, applied leniency that we could sort of look at all this material, wherever it is, top, bottom, middle of the barrels, and it's all, it's one big mix, and if it's 100 against one, it's bottle. Rebbe Zoyim Yeroyinus at El Yoyinus, we look at the upper layers, one of which is, is truma, kiloin prudois, as though they're separate, meaning they're all mixed together with the bottoms. If you have enough uh, amongst all these figs to nullify the layer of truma, you're good to go. Rabbi Shoy no. He takes a more strict approach. He says, you need a hundred top layers. So you need a hundred containers, 101, one of which is truma, a hundred is not, to nullify the truma. Rabbi Shoy Meya. Pumen, if you have a hundred mouths, a hundred top layers, uh, then yeah, well, then you can uh, nullify the truma. But otherwise, you can't just factor in the bottom uh, material. They're not part of the equation, not part of the mix-up. Hapumen, uncertainty. All the top layers are also out of uncertainty. Vashulayim, mutar, and anything below that is okay. According to Rameer's uh, approach, Reb Lezer's very lenient. You can sort of virtually mix all the materials together and get yourself a hundred Verses 1, Rabbi Shua says, you can only count on the top layers. Now comes Rabbi Yehuda's version of events. Rabbi Daimer. According to him, Rabbi Lezer's sheet is like this. Rabbi Lezer, Imer, Imyesh Sham Kuf Pumen Yalu. This is like Rabbi Shua a minute ago. If you have a hundred upper layers, Yalu, that can nullify the problematic Truma layer. Rimla, but otherwise, I Pumen Asurin, and the rest is okay like Rabbi Shua a minute ago. Rabbi Shua Imer, he's very strict according to this. Approach. Rabbi Shua Imer, no way. A literal Gatsias is not bottle at all. You can have a million against it. It's not bottle. And this is the shita that we were looking for. Rashi says, because a literal Gatsia is something important, something sold individually by number, in which case uh, you can't nullify it. Rabbi Shua Imer, imagine you have 300 barrels. So you have 300 layers to speak of. 300 upper... Lo yalu, you can't be mavato the truma. Rashi says, the chol shedarkei limano is lebato, anything which even at times is sold by number is not, uh, is never bato. And that uh, corresponds with our Mishnah as well. A bal chai, mixed into the other bali chai, the other animals is not bato, for that reason. Now Rabbi Shua will conclude he says, look, uh, but in the following situation, it, it, I, even I agree, even I will concede that Bittel will nullify the Isra, the Rasa Eagle. So he squished in these figs into the Eagle container, but he's not sure where, top, bottom, middle. So eventually it's all getting mixed up with the rest. It loses its uniqueness. It loses its individuality. It's no longer a separate layer. In this case, even I agree that it will be Bittel. Okay, so the Brisa concludes, you should know that in this case, all agree. So he pushed it in, it's not sure where. Rashi explains, here we're speaking not on the top, rather it was a, a wide, you know, container, and it was on the bottom. He's not sure, the right side, the left side, the middle. Uh, Right on this side, the other side, all agree in this case. If there's a hundred versus this one, right? A hundred against one, then it's bot. Okay, Ravashi Omar. Here comes another answer on another terrace. Tao Kash. Why isn't the problematic animal bottle on the rest? Ravashi Omar Filu Temi Rabbanon. You know what? Even the Rabbanon who disagree with Rabbi Shua's strictness. That anything which is even at times counted can't be bottled. Even they who hold that you could be mavatl, typically, but not by an animal. Bali chaim chashivi an animal. It's a live being. 
It's chashev. And it's not going to be a bottle. Hence, even one problematic, faulty, behemoth cannot be bottled on the rest. So what do we do? You can't be makrib. You can't be makrib the rest. In fact, if the, it was a chatas ha-mesa that got mixed in, everything is slated for misa. And the question is why? Okay, bitol, no bitol. But there's another concept called, called the parish miruba parish, which means you have a mix. of good and bad. And the majority is good. So you have one in 10,000. That's a problematic item. And you take one. You remove one item out of that mix. Chances are, he's okay, right? Chances are, he belongs to the majority element amongst this mix. Far chance that he's the single problematic item, right? Okay, so now, we have another solution to our mix, to our problem. Venim sheikh extricate one animal, pull him, pull him out of the group. Rashi's girl is chad chad. One at a time. Take one at a time. Take one out. Okay. What are the chances that this animal is the problematic one? Far chance, because it's just one bad animal and, you know, nine other ones. We assume he's from the nine. Okay, go uh, put him as a carbon. Do the same thing to the next until you're done being macro of the whole group. Right? Each one individually can benefit from this concept called called the parash miruba parash. Right? Something which separates from a group is assumed to be part of the majority element. Vinema, and let's just say, called the parash, when something separates, miruba parash, assumingly he's from the majority. Says the Gemara, hold it. Nimshech, you're suggesting that we pull one at a, at a time from the group. Havale kavua, you're running into another issue. You see, the group is established in its place. That's called kavua. When something is established, we ignore majority and minority. The, the, uh, the problematic element in this, in this equation doesn't really relate to the rest of the element, to the rest of the uh, equation, I should say. So it doesn't really become part of that broader equation. And basically, each item there now has a 50-50 chance, so to speak, that you're running into the Isser, that he, in fact, is the problematic item. When you have a mix, a proper mix, so the problematic item, the Isra, connects to the rest. It becomes part of this broader equation, the majority of which is okay. So you say, okay, whatever comes from that mix, presumably it's from the majority, called the parish, made a parish. But when it's a kavua situation, when there are you know, established stores, you don't know which store you bought your meat from. You don't say, well, most stores are okay. No, each store is a standalone entity. It doesn't relate, doesn't mix with the rest. So your meat is now 50% okay, 50% not okay, right? Which makes it not okay. You could have bought it from the kosher or non-kosher stores. You don't reckon with the fact that there are more kosher than non-kosher. Same here. It's a group of animals standing in one place. So the usur amongst them is kavua. So any animal there is now sort of 50-50. Any animal you encounter could be the usur, could be the heter. When you have a kavua situation, it's like 50-50. You can't reckon with majority versus minority. Ella, rather, the question was fine. Don't extricate an animal from the standing group. Push them around, deny them, let them run, get them running, get them moving around. And now they're no longer kavua, they're moving around. They're no longer established and permanent in their... Veneva, now we can apply the idea of called the parish, but of a parish. I'm a rubber, the answer is like this. Xera, true. When you grab the animal, at that time, at that point in time, you can say, yeah, called the parish, made of a parish. But there's a xera, there's a concern. Because then, when you take these animals, separately, of course, and then you give it to the kain, you know, to ten kainim, it can, it can happen that they will be makr of the karbanis all at the same time and do the zrika at the same time. Now they're sort of rejoined together as a group. And um, we're back to the, uh, to the problem because in this group you have Isra. Gzerud is a concern. Shema Yavoyu, Yud Kayanam Bas Achas Viakribu. It might turn out that the uh, 10 animals that you had pulled out separately now rejoin together during the Hakrava process, being executed by 10 Kayanam simultaneously. Amalia. Haumar Rabban Rabba said this. Chacham turned to Rabba. What's the issue? 
al miata megisa asiru. You mean to say that it, you know it became mutter already when you separated one animal at a time from this bunch? Well, you're okay because we assume you're from the majority, and likewise you're okay, right? So they were sort of stamped as okay as kasha. You're suggesting that they become usher again? They sort of lose that hetter? The magisa, the container containing the blood of the carbon now, joins them together and makes, makes them usher again? How could that be? Once they were stamped as okay, Rashi says, they had a chazaka. When you took that animal from the group, that's it. It's kasher. You can't revert and lose that status and become pasal again just because they're being processed together. Who cares? So the answer is like this. Mishum shema yavoyu yud gehanim bas achas v'yichal. No, the concern is not that the hakrava will occur at the same time. That wouldn't be an issue because once they become mutter, they can't become asr again. The concern is that maybe ten kehanim will decide to grab these animals individually, of course, but it will be done at the same time. So since they're all being taken at the same time, you can no longer say, well, this one is coming from the majority, this one, they're all sort of dispersing at the same time. There's no majority to speak of. He's just dissolving the group all at the same time. So that's a concern. If we allow this to happen, it might happen in this way. Uh, if you allow it to take individually, it might end up happening, happening as a simultaneous dissolvation of this group and that's a problem well says the Gemara we just spoke about chasing them around rather than taking them as they're, as they're standing you know stationary what are the chances of grabbing 10 animals at the same time while they're running around it's, it's quite impossible says the Gemara How is it possible to have ten kahanim grab these uh, these animals that are running amok at the same moment? Elama Rav says, Rav, you're right, Mishum Kapoor. Back to your question, why? Why can't I just take one animal at a time? Mishum Kapoor. Because although you know, you've learned Zvacha Ma'in Gimel, you know the proper way to do it is to get them running around, disperse them before you grab. But the next day I might not, not, might not realize, might not know that. And Chacham are concerned if we allow it in this case, it might come, it might lead to the next person grabbing an animal from this group while in stationary position, which uh, runs you into the issue of Kavua, which says, Abel's, the Yalacha of Kaldah Parash, Meruva Parash. Amarava, okay, Hashad Amr Rabbanon, Loi Nakra. Knowing this, that the Rabbanon disallowed this group from Hakrava. For whatever reason, but they disallowed it. Suppose a person goes ahead and takes an animal and his makrav has a carb. Does it work? A carb loy it doesn't work. What's rachamim? Disallowed it. It becomes doch, it becomes rejected. It's no longer fit for a carb. Eisvei Rav Huna Bar Yudel Rav has a kasha to you, he says. Really? If the rachamim disallow hakrava, that uh, disables it permanently? So we have a case in the uh, Mishnayis, right? We discussed it the other day. In Mishnayis Kinem, we, we have these birds that got mixed up. Chata, so Chata's bird, which is meant to be processed on the lower part of the Mizbech, so Arab oil got mixed into an oil bird, which is meant to be processed upstairs. Or the opposite. I feel it's one into 10,000. You're stuck. You're Musa Kulan. They all have to be put to death. <coughs> because... Um, you can't take your chances. You can't be mocked of them on a chance that it might be in the wrong place, right? Okay. When do we say when the Kayin uh, decided to do the right thing and to uh, seek advice, to seek instructions? If the Kayin was a wise guy, he decided, okay, I'm going to do this without asking. What happens now? So it depends what he did. Also on the Malam, if he did them all, the entire mix, he did on the upper part of the Mizbeach. So the Eula is okay, but the Chatos is as possible. Mechza Kosha, Mechza Pasle, right? Half is okay, half not. Right? Let's say it's one and one, right? So the Eula is okay, but the Chatos is not. Mechza Kosha, Mechza Pasle. Likewise, 
if he processed them both downstairs, Lamata, same story, half and half, Mechza Kasha, Mechza possible because the Echatos is fine, but the Eila is not. But Achas Lamalav, Achas Lamata, he decided to do one up and one down, but he failed to identify which one belonged where. So now we have to assume the worst, that perhaps he totally mixed them up. He did the Echatos upstairs and the Eila downstairs, and therefore Shneim Psur, they're both puzzle. So the question is, here's another example where the Chachamim would not have allowed him to proceed, right? Like we said, you know, uh, if you would have sought instructions, we would have told him, hey, don't process anything. And still we say, if he proceeded, he salvaged at least something. And according to you, Rava, whatever the Chachamim disallowed, Hakrava, that becomes possible, becomes Dachi. Right? Okay, so again, the case of Achas, Lamat, Achas, Lamat, Shtem, they're both possible. Oh, and the Mishnah continues, Shani, Oimer, why? I'm concerned that he flipped them around. Chatas, Krevel, Lamala. Oil, Krevel, Lamat, the Chatas went upstairs and the Oil went downstairs. But the question is, why is anything kosher in the other cases? If they became uh, possible, you know, rejected with Rabban? Ella, how come on the Omer, Balachayim, Nidachin? How come on the Omer, Balachayim, Einu, Nidachin? Really, this connects to another, another machlaik, whether an animal, a living being, can become rejected at all. Rabbah was going like the opinion that it could, Balachayim Nidachim, whereas this Mishnah is of the opinion that a Balachay is not going to be a, there's no, no concept of Dichoy by a living being. There's always, you know, always hope for a living being. So, uh, yeah, that explains the, the Mishnah. Asks the Gemara, yeah, but all agree that once the animal experienced Shechita and then it became rejected, all agree it becomes rejected permanently, right? Harish Shechutim. A carbon after shkita, the lukuli almond and dachin, all agree, dichoy applies. Right? In concept. And still, and all, we'll find you a case. That, um. That although you shouldn't be processing the, uh, the carbon, if you do it, it's okay. Right? Like in a case of a mix up. Which mix-up are you speaking about? So Rashi said, speaking about a, a behemoth, which was a balmon. Blemished uh, behemoth. And the, the parts of that behemoth, after Shechita, got mixed into other parts, other ivarim of other karbonis, which were fine karbonis. So if you ask me right now, right? If you ask the Chacham, if you seek advice from the Rav, he would say, halt. Right? Hands off. Don't do anything. You can't be marker of any of these avaram on the mezbeach. Because amongst them you have uh, faulty avaram. And still in all, the Mishnah says, it's none. Let's say he proceeded, he did it anyways. Rebleza Aymer, Rebleza holds. Im karav harev shilachad mehen. So you have all the avaram, you have the, uh, like we said, we have the uh, one that was the blemished one, the pasal carbon, and we have the other ones which are proper carbon oila, which belong in the mezbeach. So Rebleza says, Imagine you have ten heads here, meant for the Mizbeach. Im Karev Haroish Shalach Men, if one of the heads somehow made it to the Mizbeach, wasn't supposed to, but it was born on the Mizbeach. So we say, you know what? Let's blame uh, the Isra on that one. Let's assume that was the problematic one. It's out of the way. And now, Yikrivu Kala Roshan. We can go ahead, Lichat Chila, process the rest of the heads. So it's a big, a big kula, big leniency, right? That we, uh, we assume. We hope for the best. The problematic one was already put on the Mizbech. It's too late. It's out of the way. And the rest are okay. That's a kasha on Rava now. Because Rava told us that wherever you meant to keep hands off and you went and you insisted and proceeded, it's, it's, it's dachi. It's pushed away. It's, it's, it's rejected. And here we have a case where had he sought our instructions, we would not have allowed it to happen. You can't just go take your chance. You mark of one of the many, which contains a problem, right? He did it anyways. So now uh, he can continue. And you mark of the rest. They're okay. Says the Gemara, You're right. Clearly this uh, opinion just mentioned will hold that even after Shechita, it doesn't become Dachi, but uh, Rava. Sorry, um, um, this um, this price, this Mishnah Belezer says that even after Shechita does not uh, experience Dichui, 
He's going like the Shita, who the Omar Kachan on Hamitzri, who holds the son of Hamitzri Omer that even after Shita, if something happens, you can still salvage it, and there's no Dichri. The son of Hamitzri Omer, this is on Yom Kippur, we have the pair of goats, right? One is a Chata, Sar Lashem, one is La Azazel, the empty throne of the mountain. He says like this, even after they shechted the chatas and the blood is sitting in the, in the container and somehow his partner died. What should we say? Disabled? Gone? Or do we quickly get another animal and pair him up? Do we say, well, once he becomes possible, once he becomes, you know, deactivated, he loses his partner, uh, so that stamps him as rejected and you have to start again? No. Maybe Chaveiro Mizavel, if you just bring another animal quickly and pair him up and uh, proceed with the, with the blood, there's no dikh. So that's a unique shita, which Rabbi Lezer follows as well. But uh, Rabbi was going with the you know, standard conventional shita, which holds that uh, not only is um, something which is shachut become nidche, but even a balchai. Right, uh, Rabbi held that even the uh, the Balchai, the case in our Mishnah, where one problematic animal mixed up with many others, once we don't allow, Chacham stop the the process, stop, don't take your chances. So that makes it uh, that stamps is that stamps it as a nitcha, as rejected, and even if he continues proceeds, the makriv, it uh, will not be considered a kasher or karma. Okay, so uh, in a nutshell, we had a uh, case of a uh, problematic. Puzzle animal mixing into many others, which are okay. Mission says they're all now uh, the puzzle. Can't take your chances. And the question was why? It's bottle. It's one in many. The answer is, well, an animal is sometimes something which is counted and that gives it chashivas, or because in general a balchai is chashiv and not bottle. What about just pulling out one of the group and saying, well, chances are he's the okay one. Call the parish, mirva parish. Um, and even, you know, let's say we'll get them running around so there's no issue of kavua, of being stationary, of being planted in their place. Well, the gzera is if we allow it uh, to be done uh, running around. Next time it might happen when they're standing together, which creates a situation of kavua, and uh, this allows the idea of called a parish. Going to Rava, take it a step further. Once uh, this was said, even if it proceeds, and does a krava, it'll consider it possible. All the best to you, and that's the